And so that. So I'll do the little. Anastasia. Hey. Welcome, everyone. My name is Angela Mills. This is a recording of the Residence Advisory Committee. And we are meeting virtually due to suspension of certain open meeting laws by our wonderful governor, Governor Healy. And at this time, I just wanted to let everyone on this call know that this meeting is being recorded and that it will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel by our wonderful IT department very shortly. And at this time, I'd like to recognize the chair, Jim Pistring. Take it away, Jim. Hi, everybody. So I think that means our meeting is officially called to order. Um, and our first item on the agenda is the approval of our minutes from the May 16th meeting. And I actually have some questions before we approve them. So we can approve them without the questions, I guess. But one thing um, at that meeting, um, Megan and Anastasia said they were going to draft a summary statement for the Charter Review Commission. Was that, did that happen? Wait, who, who said Anastasia and I said we would do it? Yeah. Didn't happen. That, that has not happened. Uh, unfortunately, I've had some family health issues that have kept me from Here. doing a lot of things that I'd hoped to do this summer. Uh -huh. uh, do we know if the Charter Review Commission is still interested or accepting Yes, um, they haven't done, the meeting was just announced by Athena about 48 hours ago, which is the 20th of September in the late afternoon. So there's plenty of time and that we're not even allowed to communicate with each other. So there's been zero, but I'm planning actually to write an, I'm on it, by the way, okay. I'm planning to write a uh, email to the group and send it to Athena to circulate. But there's been zero communication and we, I asked us have a couple of others for everybody's email address so we could start chatting. And we were told we weren't allowed to have them all, although I have seven of them. So are the two of you still interested in writing some summary statement of RAC activities? What would be the purpose of it? Would it be proposing something or would it be, I'm sorry, I don't, didn't remember seeing um, that. I think the idea was, it's what, I'll, read our, I'll read our minutes from the last meeting. Um, to give them a cover letter and a packet of materials, including a copy of the script that we use for our interviews, a summary of the typical number of interviews each member attends during a calendar year, a copy of the CAF form demographics from December 2018 until 2024. So, so basically assembling a packet and writing a little cover letter saying, hi, here we are. This is what we've been up to. Should I ask Athena first if there's anybody else is doing anything like that? Um, I guess, them, yeah. Or I'm happy to work on it if we think it's worth the effort. Yeah, it. you know, my feeling is we should do it, but not have it be a huge effort. It's just kind of saying, here's what we do. Here's what our script looks like for the interviews. Here's the sort of interviews we've been doing and we're here, hello, kind of thing. I don't know, but, anybody else have comments on value of something like that? I don't feel particularly strong about it one way or another. Uh, I think, you know, the the op-ed that we had talked about writing, uh, Mag and I, is, is maybe a little bit more, in my mind, a little more important because it's about putting out a public call to join committees. Right. Mm -hmm. and providing some information for the public about the importance of, you know, civic engagement and participating in, in these various committees that the town has. Uh, but at this particular ask, I don't really feel strongly about it. I agree with everything she said. Okay, I'll go along so, with you guys. You know, us writing that uh, op-ed, this would be a good time of year to do it. Okay, and so also represent different perspectives ourselves. Uh, we're right, because that was the other thing in the minutes that you guys you guys agreed to do all these things in the minutes. I don't know what you were thinking back in May, mm -hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So if you so you're saying you're committed and you'll still try and do that, co-write a letter urging people to volunteer, and but we'll pass on the summary statement of activities for charter commission. They can ask if they have any questions. I'll offer to let you know if any other committees or bodies are giving information to the charter review. 
Mm -hmm. and it seems appropriate, but I feel actually we shouldn't do it if we're the only ones. Okay. And I've, I've been picking up little hints that there may be a, uh, the enthusiasm it took um, Athena many months to get a response from all the members, just telling them what their schedules were. Um, just She just got that information this week. I think it was this week. And the time it's available is Friday afternoon, like at three to five or something. So it's, I was surprised by that. And not everybody, I was, I said, I'd prefer to meet in person for all the meetings and, if she had written, it's important to meet in person for the first meeting at least, and then you can all decide, well, our first meeting is not in person. Some of us will be in person, but there's some people who, who will not attend any meeting, which is, um, don't put this in the minutes, but it's not a bad, it's not a good sign. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. The other activities I'm involved with, it's always a struggle getting people to respond to doodle polls and respond to, you know, this group being sort of the exception rather than the rule. So it's, it's an, you know, people not reading their emails and all that sort of stuff. But, it's just um, something we all, you know, it was at least supposedly a competitive process and we had to write a 700 word thing, yeah. um, sit through an extremely short interview. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Having said all that about the minutes and what we're going to do now, I now we can have a vote. Do we want to approve our minutes from the May 16th? We don't need to change the minutes based on this discussion. They're still accurate. So all those in favor of approval of the minutes from May 16, either raise your hand or say aye. Aye. Looks like unanimous approval of the minutes. And next on the agenda is reviewing our activities since the last meeting. Um. Mm, interviews. I don't know, Angela, do you want to give a summary of all the interviews we've been doing in, in 10 seconds or less? So by my calculation, we have interviewed for um, Board of Health and Energy and Climate Action Committee and Board of Health. And we are waiting to do Human Rights Commission. Those are upcoming. And um, also Community Safety Social Justice Committee, because it has been challenging as people have been traveling all summer to get people in areas where there's Wi-Fi. Oh, Council on Aging. Did I mention Council on Aging? Oh, yeah, I did. One Council of those, on Aging. Yeah. Which is a, a big one because they've had lots of turnover. They've had um, five members term off and they need a good infusion of new blood. Uh -huh. Could and you say the other ones that you just mentioned? Council on Aging, Board of Health, and um, Energy and Climate safe. Energy and Climate Action. And didn't you say the social community? Is... So what's upcoming is, upcoming would be Human Rights Commission and Community Safety Social Justice. Yeah, there's a little flurry, not next week, but the week after. Yes. We did have that last Council on Aging applicant was such a great interview we were all so excited <laughs> when you get somebody good it's really a great thing it is <laughs> um okay and how's the um search for volunteers going is it they're just so, coming at you in hordes um we're hoping to do a really big push at the block party because we feel like we see um residents who we don't normally see at events mm -hmm. Um, I did a big push at the Community Safety Day at Mill River, and I spoke with two new families. Um, we were really lucky in that there was a birthday party for a three-year-old going on, and the three-year-old had moved, well, was born during the pandemic, and so all of the families that were attending that event were newish to town. Mm -hmm. um, so that was great. It was kind of kismet. And then after the block party, there are three events um, this month that are hosted by the off-campus um, housing office, uh, Joe Maspo and his friends over at UMass. There's one on Phillips Ave, one at Valley Lane, and the other in the North Prospect area. And um, I thought I'd pop into those and introduce myself and maybe um, hand out cards with the QR codes for community activity forms for CAF linkage. Great. And I can't be at the block party, but hopefully you guys can join in for a while and try and wrangle people. 
could yep. you remind us when it is? Have... Thursday, September 19th in the evening. It begins officially, I think, at 5, but I'll be there from like 2.30 on just setting up. Okay. And then we try and get out of there as soon as the mosquitoes arrive and, and the music gets louder. So I'm there from like, I don't know, 5, I want to say like 5 to 8. I, I could do a couple of hours. I'm right in front of the fire station with all of my municipal employee friends. I'll, I could do some some of that time. That's I'm sorry, two days. I might do that, but I think maybe I should just take it down. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm happy. I was going to respond to your email, uh, Angela. I'm, I'm happy to attend. Uh, I don't know if two of us can be there at the same time. Maybe it doesn't matter for right. you know, open meeting law. But uh, I, you know, I have a meeting from 4:30 that will end probably at five, but might go over a little bit longer. So it's mm -hmm. more that I would be able to join around 530. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm whatever would be great. It's just nice to see a friendly face. Yeah, I don't think open meeting law is a concern. You're basically just talking to people say, hey, it's great to volunteer for a committee. Why don't you do it? It's a lot of fun. Here's all the committees. And that is, it's not yeah. really a rack meeting. So Right. And I mean, we're talking about it publicly anyway, and I think people would know why we're there if they read the minutes and watch the video. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not super worried about it, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that folks knew that uh, there might be two of us there then. Right. I think that's okay. You obviously mm -hmm. can't talk about rack stuff, but you can talk about, you know, how great it is to volunteer for committees and these are the ones available, that sort of thing. Yeah. I I was also able to meet new families at the first day event at Kendrick Park the day before school started. And that was amazing. Huh. Like so many new families and so many um, multi-generational families. So families where the grandparents were living with the grandkids. Um, and that was that was awesome. And it was tough to chat with people specifically about serving on boards and committees because I was right next to the DJ, but the turnout was amazing. I found when I went to that event um, that was the uh, Pacific Islanders event, um, a lot of people weren't didn't live in Amherst, but the people I spoke with, it really, it really, you had to really go up, out, out from behind the desk and mm -hmm. talk to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of them signed up for anything, but mm -hmm. they took the materials. Right. Do you have little trinkets that you can give away at the block party? I have some new Town of Amherst stickers that look really great on laptops and, and um, water bottles and reusable beverage containers. And that's it for Trinket Land. We tried that's, not to buy schlock. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. I won't be there because it's two days after my knee replacement surgery. Ooh. So I'm very good excited luck. about that, but good I'm luck. sad to miss the block party. Good luck, Jim. <laughs> Take yeah. a picture. Jim. What was that? We'll take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to taste. You don't have to send us a picture of your knee. <laughs> oh, I should. <laughs> um, okay. Next on our agenda is recruitment update, which we kind of already talked about. I don't know if you have more to say about that, Angela. Kind of what we we're just talking about fits into that no, as well. No, I can just say that the number of um, community activity forms coming in from uh, first years has been pretty pretty steady. So we're seeing a nice kind of flow in from especially students who want to get involved with um, climate action initiatives mm -hmm. and conservation trails. So it's been nice. Good. I, I might have mentioned this at the last meeting, but I've heard from two or three different people of color who aren't politically active that they don't want to stick their necks out because it's so uh, the, the climate around the public conversation, some of the public conversation around racial justice issues is so um, uh, intense. And uh, it's, I don't think we can solve it, but maybe naming it is part of the beginning of solving it. I don't know who can solve it, but it's a shame. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that hesitation is limited to one demographic, you know, That's I'm right. constantly... I'm trying to get, I was trying to get Barbara, my wife, to volunteer for something, and she just doesn't want to. She doesn't want to be out there in the public where people can yell at her and stuff like that. So I think a lot of people feel that. It's a shame. Yes. Um, to segue into our next thing, discussion of League of Women Voters charter proposals. So um, this is, it's on the web in the League of Women Voters site, but it caught my eye. One of their proposals is, and I'm quoting here, 
require applications for seats on town committees and boards, boards overseen by the town manager to be public records with the consent of the applicant. So it's kind of taking this halfway thing because there's been pressure in the past saying, you know, why aren't our interview applicants public record? Um, and so this is saying kind of a weird phrasing of words is saying require them with the consent of the applicants. Um, so I don't know. It just sort of caught my eye. I'm curious to hear what other people think or say about that. Yeah, Meg. Um, I support this. I think they could change the word required just to say the applicants will be public knowledge unless the candidates ask not to be. But I personally think transparency is good. And Paul's getting a lot of, I think, unfair criticism for uh, sort of behind the scenes picking and choosing. And, and uh, I just think it would be good for everybody if it was transparent. And especially, I think it would be good for Paul. Is, uh, but I'm not sure. I don't know why. I, my opinion, anyway. I think it should be transparent. And the argument that it shouldn't be is that people wouldn't apply for positions if they knew it was going to be public. So this this proposal allows them to, their names not to be known. It's, it's, I think it's a weak argument, but it has some legitimacy that some people don't want to try and fail and have everybody know. Anastasia, any thoughts? Uh, do you have the exact language that is yes. being so it's require applications for seats on town committees and boards overseen by the town manager to be public records, comma, with the consent of the applicant. And I'm suggesting changing the word required, but it will be. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I think that the, the, the word required makes it sound in some ways like this is punitive. <laughs> When the, the goal is transparency and the goal is to, you know, to encourage more folks to, to sign up and to join and also to understand the process by which these different, uh, you know, committees are, are, are filled. Um, so I would encourage them to find another word as well. So I have two comments. First of all, this is this is their published report to the charter commission so this isn't something we can change or you know we can give feedback to the league of women voters if we want or to the charter commission if we want but we can't change this it's already what they're saying um early on when we well in 2018 i guess we did sort of our first survey of people who had applied and some of this information was in the survey but i think a lot more of it was just anecdotal but what i certainly heard from a lot of applicants is a strong desire to not be public if until they were appointed. You know, I heard from we heard from a fair number of people, good representation of people, that they'd be less inclined to volunteer for something if they knew that their application was public. And I tended to believe them. Um, I think I hear what Meg is saying about people criticize the process because they don't know who's really applying and they suspect the worst kind of, but if only some of the applications are public and others aren't, that doesn't solve the problem and could in fact make the problem worse. So um, so my personal thought is I, I like it the way it is, but I don't know that anyone's asking us to decide or weigh in at this point anyway. So you're not proposing that we vote on it or anything like that? No, I wasn't proposing. Yeah. I, okay. you know, okay. the agenda just says we're having a discussion about it. I suppose we could come back and put it on an agenda for a future meeting to discuss and send our opinion to the Charter Commission. But I don't think we need to at this time. Well, I think, yeah, we've related to this, I think the town has a, an unfair reputation among some people of being, of avoiding transparency. And some of these things are, would be easy to change. Not that we would do it for public relations reasons only, but um, 
I, I can't remember when Paul appointed somebody who wasn't the person that we recommended, at least on like the meetings I've been interviews I've been part of. Yeah, there have been a small handful where I was overruled by others in the interview panel, a pretty small handful. Usually there's a, there's a consensus there, or sometimes oh, it's it, none it, of it us know when we make Paul pick. He doesn't have to go with what we recommend. I mean, ours no. were advisory, but he seems yeah. that he does. And uh, um, yeah, I, I feel I mean, that I 90... find the discussions authentic and uh, when the when the candidate gets off and we discuss what the committee needs, the person who's representing the committee, I find those to be useful discussions and consensus that mm -hmm. would benefit from. Not that we want the whole world watching those discussions at all, but just the who who applied and who I don't know. I just I'm not again. It's not just for public relations, but um, the appearance of transparency is part of transparency. <laughs> The transparency of transparency, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Um, the question back to you, Jim, is it, you yeah. know this is on the agenda. You said that we we're not going, you know, we're not being asked our opinion on any of these words. I guess I'm curious what why it's on the agenda. Like, you know, what is a discussion? What purposes does a discussion on this topic actually serve uh, beyond us just kind of weighing in? You know. Um. Yeah. I mean, some it's. It was on the agenda just because it caught my eye and I thought it'd be great for us to talk about it. If we want, and we meaning, you know, two out of the three of us even want to release an official statement or suggestion of change, we can definitely do that. That's all part of this discussion. So it's, it's kind of, it was an open-ended discussion where we can choose to take some action or not okay. as we choose. And, you know, my personal inclination was not to take any action, but I'm happy to be overruled. So that can work as well. Appreciate that. Yeah. So do we want to talk about this more? Are we done or we want to put it on a future agenda? What, what, what do people think? Yeah. I, I, you know, I think if, if the, the charter, uh, you know, commission would, would be reviewing or is asking for input in any way around, you know, uh, these kinds of questions that it would be worth this committee submitting some sort of formal, statement of some kind, right, that that sort of says, you know, we encourage uh, a revision of language that would, uh, you know, feel more, uh, you know, user friendly, if you will, or some way of, you know, of, of inviting more people to to participate and not have any kind of restrictions placed on any of that. Um, but again, that's that's a big if and I feel like, you know, us sort of submitting a statement just out of the blue, maybe doesn't make a lot of sense, you know? I could let you know if it comes up or when it comes up. I'm sort of might have made a colossal error of signing up for this or, but <laughs> what was I thinking? But, um, <laughs> and so I could keep you informed of how, of how the discussions are going. Okay. That sounds good to me. That sounds good to me. My big thing is going to be how to increase meaningful participation. Yeah. Um, and uh, then, of course, that raises the question of what's meaningful. Um, but so I'll, I, I can just let you know if this comes up so we don't put the effort into writing a statement that is not read or relevant. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you, Meg it on my list so i remember i'm sort of remembering now that editorial like forgot oh well okay next on our agenda is public comment but i don't think we have any public here so i guess there's no public comment <laughs> um other items not anticipated by chair i had two things written down first was reminding people of the block party but that's already been done and the other was an email that meg sent just around 30 minutes ago which um, I'll read so we can discuss it. Hang on, because I thought it was worth discussing. Let's see, I have to find it first. Shouldn't we? There it is. So, um, so what Meg said, if you don't mind me quoting you on this, 
I'm concerned about the rancor in our town's political culture that bleeds into all sorts of other settings. I'm wondering if we might seek to build more diversity of opinions into our town committees with the intention of helping everyone learn how to deal with differences with more civility and kindness. A big ask and perhaps not something for our committee. It seems that all of us who care about civility and the value of diverse perspectives should think more deeply about a way forward. Um, I'll go first and comment on it just because why not? Um, I feel like one of the things I'm always looking for, for better or worse, when I'm doing one of these interviews, mm. as I'm looking for people who seem to have a particular agenda they're on this committee because they want to see this happen or they don't want to see that happen and those are the people i tend to shy away from and i'm less likely to recommend i'm always looking for people who don't seem to have an agenda who are interested you know if it's council on aging they're interested in issues having to do with aging and they're not interested in seeing this done or seeing that not done and it's not exactly the same as looking for people with diversity of opinions. It's almost looking for people who don't have opinions or don't have specific opinions as they relate to a specific committee. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think attempting to balance, you know, and, and also another thing I look for, and I think Paul looks for too, is balance of committee on age, on gender, on on diversity issues, on where they live, how long they've been here, all that sort of stuff, all trying to balance all those things amongst the committee. I feel like to also try and balance differences of opinion on a committee is more nebulous, more difficult, much more of a challenge. So again, it sounds weird the way I said that. Angela got a smile out of Angela. I'm looking for people who don't have strong opinions. And that's, that's my idea of a good candidate for a committee. Now I'll let somebody else talk. Yeah, I have, I have some thoughts on that too. I mean, I think I, I hear what Meg is suggesting and I, you know, and I, I understand, and I, I think it's actually something that is a, a critical problem in our civic engagement around the country, quite frankly, over the past few years, you know, civic engagement has definitely become more partisan, uh, more divided. There's a whole lot more rancor. As a former elected official, I felt that directly that there's, you know, you can't escape it. Um, and I also think that, uh, you know, these committees are typically, you know, are, are just everyday folks who we are inviting to volunteer and, and learn about the various ways that the town addresses issues or problems. Um, and, you know, I know for myself when I'm interviewing folks or I'm a part of the interview committee, uh, I am looking for representation of diversity of all kinds, uh, but I'm not asking people to share what their political opinion is or what their, you know, their how where they land on a particular issue that a committee may or may not deal with, right? Because it is kind of unfair, I think, uh, you know, uh, to to try to position people that way. Um, I also know, having served on committees in town and having been an elected official, that sometimes when presented with different information, you might change your mind and you might actually go in a totally different direction. So, you know, having trying to to balance a difference of opinion is is, I think, too complicated and far beyond the scope of this committee. Uh, and not really something that we should be, you know, we should be thinking about like that. Um, I do think that making sure that we have a diversity of, you know, of age, of demographics, you know, of, of racial and gender identity, of, you know, position, income, all of those things are things that we can quantify and that we can try to make sure are represented on different committees. Um, beyond that, you know, I don't, I don't know that we, we have, we have the ability to make those kinds of judgments, you know, or should really. 
Um, I, I will not, you know, I will say Jim respectfully, like I, you know, I, I don't want necessarily people without opinions, right? Like I want people to have opinions, but to be open-minded, you know, uh, yeah. and to be willing to write, to, to, you know, reflect on, again, that new information that might come in. Sometimes we change our minds, you know, or sometimes we, you know, we suddenly say, oh, wow, like this is something that I hadn't considered before. Let me add that to my calculus, you know, but um, again, I, you know, I do want to lift up and honor what you're asking about, Meg, and I think it is a, it's a critical question for us to grapple with, especially when we are thinking about how to increase the amount of civic participation uh, in our community and to do it in, in respectful, you know, neighborly ways, right? Mm -hmm. When I said no opinion, I really meant open-minded. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, Meg. Um, I agree with Anastasia and you too, Jim. Uh, I think this isn't the place to discuss. I mean, we can discuss it, but this isn't the place to, this committee isn't the place to resolve or, or take action that'll deal with this a lack of civility among some of our residents. Um, I, I appreciate what Anastasia said, that it's a, it's a problem. It's all, and that it's a national problem as well. Um, so while I still, feel it's something that needs to be addressed somehow. I don't know what that way is. Yeah. And uh, I'm just sad when I see good people say they don't want to participate, like Barbara, Jim. They don't want to, I mean, she's awesome. She um, does other stuff. She's okay. I know, she's involved in <laughs> theater. Yeah, she does a ton of stuff, but, you know, it's sad, or not even thinking necessarily of her, but it's, you know, sad when you see people who uh, would participate but for the rancor. Yeah. And uh, and then these things, people say things to you that are so off the wall, like they're holding on to stuff from years ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's you know, I, I'm not you recently think, you know, I'm not gonna go into it, but, um, but I agree this isn't the place to address that. And our role is really to advise Paul uh, and we can only advise him about the people who applied. We can't say, well, I want someone different <laughs> yeah yeah so thanks jim we could we don't have to address this at the next meeting yeah okay it's done one and done um so, thank you all speaking of next meeting do we want one and if so what time frame do we want one in three months six months three months three so sometime in december Here's before the winter break yeah that makes sense to me okay i'll do a doodle poll okay thank you and you'll all respond very quickly <laughs> we all have to jump in if we want to be in an interview because first <laughs> respond I, <laughs> I want to do that when i better answer put down what i was doing <laughs> get back to angela right away <laughs> i just wanted okay. to one thing this is really minor but um, I don't think we've ever talked about confidentiality, but I assume the meetings are confidential. Um, somebody who was in a committee applicant who applied asked me afterwards who were the other applicants. And of course, I said, I can't tell you. So I just wanted to confirm that that's our standard. It's, it sort of goes without saying, but I don't think it's ever exactly come up like that. Yeah, but, it's definitely confidential. Yeah, yeah, especially. Yeah. Uh, and, and what people said and all that. So, yeah. Yep. Um, anything else to discuss? I'd be happy to make a motion to adjourn if everyone's ready. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, I move to adjourn this meeting. All those in favor, raise your hand or say aye or both aye. aye. Looks like that motion is passed unanimously and we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Be Thanks, well. everybody. Bye -bye. Have fun at the block party. Thank yep. you. Good luck okay. with your knee surgery. Thank so, you. Anastasia, I'll reach out about that. I think I maybe offered to do the first draft, but I still, I'll reach out to you about that. Sounds great, Meg. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.